All right, before we get into modeling the uh, entire wreath, I just want to show you real quick um, what the final result will be before we get started. So we're in 3ds Max and we have the full wreath set up here. So these are scattered with particle flow. Um, same as the lights inside the wreath, there's going to be quite an extensive use of particle flow here to get the look that we're after. Um, and these were modeled by hand quite quickly with some modifiers. So uh, here's an end result of um, the render with some post-production on it. So this is just to, to give you an idea of what you can expect from this tutorial. Um, I only go up to the render, the post-production side of things. Uh, you'll have to take care of yourself. But um, I think this is a good start anyway. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the tutorial and uh, good luck. So for the first part of this tutorial, we're going to start by creating the wreath itself. Um, first, it's going to be done in two steps. First off, we're going to create the single branch. And then after that, we're going to scatter the branch uh, to create the final wreath look. So to start off with, <clears throat> let's start by building a cylinder. And I have my units set to centimeters here. So um, I'm doing this in kind of a real world scale. Um, I've done this a couple times before, so I kind of know which uh, values I'm going to input. So the radius is about 0.15, so about one and a half millimeters. Um, the height is basically the, the length of your branch in this case, so about eight, eight and a half centimeters. Um, you could do a little more if you want, but uh, I found this to work quite well. Then, because we're going to be scattering this final branch, we really need to keep an eye on our segments. Um, the more segments we have in the branch itself, of course, if we're going to scatter it, like, uh, I don't know, a thousand times or maybe even more, then uh, it's going to go up pretty quickly and 3ds Max is going to be pretty slow. So we'll delete some of these height segments. Um, maybe have like two or three, just to get a little variation in the branch. And especially the sides, we can bring down to six um, or even four if you're making a really big wreath, uh, depending on how many branches you're going to need for your final product. Then we're just going to taper it a little bit, bring down the amount so it just tapers up towards the top, maybe a little bit more. Don't make this too sharp yet because we're going to taper it later again once we have the needles attached. And then the last one you could do is bend it a little bit just to give it a little bit of variation. So now that we have that out of the way, we can start modeling the needle. Again, we're going to have to keep it as low as possible when it comes to poly count. So you've got other two options. You can create a plane, uh, which again, I'm going to make fairly small, maybe about five centimeters, uh, maybe about three and a half, something like that. And we're going to reset our segments here. And you can either use this uh, as a base, but I found tweaking it a little bit um, and making it two polygons instead of one adds just a little bit more detail. Um, but if you're rendering from fairly far off, it won't make a difference. But I'll go with the detailed version anyway, so you can have a look. So I'm going to up the width segments to two. I'm going to throw an edit poly on here and select the four corner verts and then with the scale tool bring them in just a little bit to get more of a needle look and that's it so we can convert this to an editable mesh same with the branch uh, whenever we're using particle flow which we're going to use for the scattering editable mesh tends to perform just a little bit better um, so that's why I'm bringing them back down to that next we're going to go to our particle view and create a new empty flow. So this way we can start building from scratch um, and we don't have to delete anything that it makes automatically. You can just build it step by step and you can see exactly what I'm doing. So for the first thing we're gonna need is a birth. Obviously our particles are gonna have to exist. Um, so setting this to zero for the start and zero for the stop will emit them instantly. So you can kind of model with them. Uh, you don't have to scrub through your timeline to see more results. We'll leave the default amount at 200 now um, and we'll add in the extra operators. We can tweak this later once we have an idea of what's going on. So for the next one, we're going to want to position our needles on our um, object. So I'm going to call this 
branch really quick. And this one, needle. Then with our position object selected, we can add either in the viewport or by list, we're gonna add our branch. And as we can see already, the particles are starting to show up. Now, what we're going to do is throw a shape instance in there, and that way we can tell uh, particle flow that we're going to be using our needle shape as the instance for the uh, needles. <laughs> um, that'll be quite clear as soon as we uh, show the geometry, basically, of the particle flow. So we're going to click particle geometry object, click on the needle, and nothing happens. The reason why this is basically happening, um, or not happening rather, is because our display is still set to ticks. If we change this to geometry, then we'll actually see our needles. Now a very important part of this is that our particle flow source needs to be set to a quantity multiplier of 100%. Otherwise, in the viewport, we're not going to get the full result. Uh, and we're basically going to be doubling values when we don't actually need to. So put this up to 100%, and we can see the needles are being scattered. Now, most needles don't really start in the middle. Um, we'd have to add more polygons if we want to do it this way. So what we're going to do is select our needle object, go to effect pivot only, and that way when we move the pivot, we can actually see it update. That's why I built the particle system first. So you get a visual representation of what's going on. Um, also, we might want to angle them a little bit. Let's angle them up. And that way we get some nice scattering going on. Now. The last part we need to add is the rotation, because obviously needles aren't really scattered just one way on the branch. We need them to go everywhere. So we'll throw in a rotation. And the basic, the uh, default value of random 3D doesn't really work in this case. So we're going to set it to random horizontal. And immediately we can see we're getting quite a nice result. Um, we can up the divergence a little bit, just give it a little bit of randomness. It always looks a little better. And that way we've almost modeled our branch. Now, before we can start scattering this object, um, what we're going to need to do is convert it into a mesh object. So the easiest way to do it is to go to our Create tab, Compound Objects, and use a mesher. Now what this will allow us to do is it will allow us to select the particle flow object and create a mesh from it. If I select real quick, we'll see a duplicate come up. Um, the mesher is still active at this moment, at this point, so we can change the amount of needles a little bit if we go back to our particle flow. Now again, keep in mind we're going to scatter this, and there's going to be a lot of branches kind of running through each other, so we don't need to make it too dense. Um, we're better off making a fairly simple and light particle object that we're going to scatter later on. Uh, rather than really filling it up with needles now and just bogging down our entire system once we get to scattering on the wreath. So let's experiment a little bit. 300 might be a bit much. We can also update the mesher. Looks okay. Might still be a little bit much, so I'm going to bring it down to 200. Um, this was just kind of to show you how you can get some granular control over the amount of needles you have on your branch. Now update again and close our particle flow window. Now, with the mesher selected and our particle system still on, we can convert this to an edible mesh. And because I placed my uh, initial branch at 0, 0, 0 in the beginning, I can do the same for the mesher, and the needles will align perfectly. Now we can turn off our particle flow source, and we're left with just our meshes. Um, I can delete the needle object, we don't need it anymore. Uh, you can hide it if you want, if you still want to do something else with it. In my case, I'm just going to delete it. I'm not going to delete the particle system just yet, because we can reuse it for our wreath. Um, you'll see in just a moment how that works. Now, the only thing that's left to do is get our branch object and attach the needles to the branch, and we now have one object, which we can scatter once again. We can throw another taper on there. This is why I told you earlier not to taper the branch too much just yet, because um, if we do it again now, then we get even more kind of a nice branch look. Um, and if you really wanted to, you could even throw a second bend on there. Where are we? There we are. And angle it a little bit more. Um, now I'm going to show you this example with just one branch. 
Uh, you could apply this to modeling several kinds of branches, maybe throw some noise on the, um, on the branch itself to get some more variation, uh, if you need more. But for now, I'm just going to do it with one branch. Uh, the only thing you need to do is just model a few separate ones. Again, scatter them with the same, same way we did it right now uh, with the particle flow system. So with that done, I'm going to convert it to an editable mesh again. Now you can leave it uh, with the modifiers on it if you really want to. Um, when you scatter it again afterwards with particle flow, you can tweak it a, le a little more. You can go back into the branch and uh, actually tweak the shape and see it update in real time. But for now, uh, this is going to look okay. We're just doing the basic version and um, you can add as much detail as you want uh, in the same way. So with that done, it's time to create our base shape for our wreath. So let's go into our splines tab and make a helix. Again, uh, I've done this a couple of times before, so what I'm gonna do is change the inner radius to about 20, outer radius to about 30. Um, the height of 10 works for me. Again, depending on your scene, you might wanna do different things so you can experiment with it experiment with it. Also, um, once your particle system is active and your branches are scattered, you can still try and mess with it. Um, it'll update in real time so you can get the result you're after. Also, I'm going to add some more turns, not 30, but 3. Thank you, Windows. Um, and with that done, all we need to do is enable this in the viewport so we can mesh it later on. Make a thickness of maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.15. Uh, again, depending on your scene and the size of everything you're modeling, you're going to want to do things differently. But this is just to, to show it. Now, the reason why I haven't deleted this particle system yet is basically we can reuse it to do the same thing, but with our branch. If we turn it on now, um, it'll say there's a bunch of stuff missing, and it's also trying to scatter uh, things on the needles of the branch as well because uh, we added it into one object. So we just need to change a few things. First one is the position object. We're going to remove the branch and add the helix. But when I click by list, you'll see that it hasn't shown up yet. That's because this is still a spline uh, to 3ds Max. So as long as enable in viewport is uh, enabled, we still we see the mesh, but it doesn't actually exist yet. So what we're going to do is throw an edit mesh on here to actually make it a mesh. And if we click buy list now, we'll actually see the helix show up. So I'm going to call this wreath for now. And again, our shape instance has disappeared in my case because I deleted the needles. Um, so what I can do now is just select the branch. And we're already getting a pretty nice result. Um, now, what we need to do in this rotation to make it really shine is set it to random 3D, and we're already getting a really cool result as well. Um, something you can do in the shape instance too, which you can do for the needles as well, um, but I found it didn't make that much of a difference. I think uh, making the branches different sizes works better, is mess with the scale. So let's put the scale 85 and give it a variation of 15. It looks okay. I think we can go even further. Let's make it 75% and a variation of 25. The variation tends to go in two ways, I've found. Um, so if you set this scale to 75 and you add a variation of 25, it'll actually go up to 100% total scale in some cases, which is what we want. Now, because our um, wreath is going to be standing up, we can turn it around and snapping here bring it up a little bit and we can float it up in the air. Then going back to our particle flow, we can actually up the amount of particles. Now on some machines this will bog it down a little bit. Um, I found as long as you stick around 100 and you've optimized your uh, star at 1000 and you've optimized your branch pretty well, then you should be okay. Um, shouldn't be too much of a hassle. And with that done, we've actually modeled our wreath. So what I'm going to do is just hide this one. And we can go on to the next part. 